Hello, and welcome to the next episode of uh, Making Mannequin Heads into Plantas. Oh, boy. So I need to have like a theme music that goes dun, 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 in the back, background. So uh, I'm not sure which episode this is. This is like number, ooh, like 22-ish. It's in the 20s. <laughs> if you've done them out of order, don't worry about it. Just keep watching. Uh, I do um, love the fact that people are enjoying these. And um, if you think about it, subscribe to it and share it with your friends. Uh, it's very random. Uh, and I will talk about a lot of different stuff, but we will have fun and you can uh, maybe hopefully learn something while we're doing this together. So today we're going to work on this one again. This should have uh, set up since I last talked to you about 20 minutes ago, 30 minutes ago, 10, uh, 20 minutes ago <laughs> in the last episode. So in the last episode, I put a bead of, uh, of this cyo, I'm getting better at the name, cyanoacrylate, cyanoacrylate. I think I'm going to stick with that pronunciation. That's what it is. There's the, right. Cyan, cyanoacrylate. I don't think that was focused. Let's see if I poke it on the screen then it supposedly will work it's probably too close anyway so it's a thick viscosity and i put some on the actual flap and it's still maybe drying well some of it did stay in contact and others of it didn't so i'm going to leave that continue to dry but this side i forgot to show you worked brilliantly so it dried and i'm not going to mess around with it too much but I am gonna tuck it in, because this is the whole function of this, right? Tuck it in, and look at that. Look at that. It's like surgery, baby. I glued the skin together. Yeah, brilliant, right? So I am going to, however, because it's hanging up on stuff, I'm gonna trim it a little bit. And I think my sewing scissors are no longer sewing scissors. I think they've just been degraded or de declassified to, um, the level of craft scissors uh, so yeah we'll see if I can reclaim them I know they're I've had them for a long time like many years and they've always functioned well so this is this is working brilliantly now what I want to do since it's tucked in and this side I'm going to tuck in a little bit and I'm going to do another bead of glue on the outside the reason I have my glasses on is that this stuff is hardcore I'm going to trim this up because where is this going? It's going outside. So I've got a lot of freedom to just sort of make it work. Okay, good. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it. Yeah, it's still got a little bit of tacky glue in there. Put it on its side for right now. Get my glue. Going to put a bead of glue over the edge. Now what this is going to do is it's going to get into any of the cracks that are not touching. Oh, and there's a lot that's not touching on this one. Good golly. Oh no, it's just see-through. That's good. So I'm gonna put it in. I'm gonna stand it back up when I'm done, but I'm gonna just fill in the gaps and get it to do that. That will be good. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, just to reinforce, and it'll seep into any little spaces that are there. I'm putting a nice thick bead on there you see that nice thick bead Ooh, and make sure that i don't have it upside down too long because i don't want it to drip on stuff and i am literally gonna got a nice bead there yeah i'm gonna set that aside and i'm gonna let that sit and dry until the next time that i'm down here and i'm not gonna mess with it so last time we were working together I put the gold layer on uh, 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 with my paintbrush, put the gold, and I put the bronze on, right? So I think it's bronze. Yeah, it was bronze. Uh, oh, it's not gold, actually. It is bright brass, which is absolutely gorgeous. I absolutely love the copper we had put on and previously, the silver we'd put on previously. I'm happy with the, the copper and the silver. Um, I don't need to touch them up, but what I am going to do is with the bright brass, I'm going to go back to that and touch that up right now. I'm going to put a little bit out 
and since not much time has gone by, aka like three minutes, eh, there we go. I'm <laughs> haven't cleaned my brush yet with actual water and soap, but I'm going to go back over this and do another coat. This is this bright bronze is very light, like not covering as much as the other paints did, but I am good with doing a couple of coats. I'm not in a rush to get this puppy done. So there we go. Yeah, as I said, I'm just doing a light drag of the, the paint over the surface so that I'm leaving more paint behind that I'm dragging off. I mean, you can, if you put the pressure of your, on your brush as you're painting determines how much paint is left behind. I know that sounds like, well, duh, Patrick, of course that's how it works. But did you ever consciously think about that? Maybe not. So for those of you who didn't consciously think of that in the past, it is something to consider and have in your mind as you're working on any project. The pressure that you apply determines how much paint is left behind or scraped off. Now, that works in both directions, which is what is so cool about it in my book. Because you can maybe want to put a second coat or a third coat and apply it heavily, right? Uh, which means that you use a very light touch. However, you may want to put a top coat over this, let the bottom coat show through somewhat. So what are you going to do? You're going to use a heavier hand. You're going to take off the paint as well while you're putting it on. So if you want the streaky look or the mottled look or whatever. So it is actually something to think about as an option while you're painting that you give yourself these sort of technique approach ideas um, conceptually that you can then apply in real life and go, oh, well, there's another layer of my painting. I can <laughs> layer, get it. I can use layers of my paint. There we go. I'm going to put down a little bit more paint. Try not to be wasteful with these paints because I actually really like them. I mean, I can get more if I need to, but I'd rather not have to run out and get more of one little bottle of paint. There we go. There we go. Second coat. That is actually really cool. So remember I sanded down because this is hard plastic. I did a rough sanding, like very rough, like sanding pad. This is, I don't even know what the grit is, but it's meant to be on an orbital sander, uh, which is like orbital palm sander. So it's this sander, right? Great little, little sander, but you get these discs and they're just fuzzy on the back. And the actual sander, the hand sander, palm sander has Velcro. I love how they've gone to, um, bringing in technologies from different industries all together. And it's got Velcro on the actual sander. And so it just sticks right onto the sanding paper. And then the sanding paper, sandpaper does not move once you put it on there. It's awesome. It's got holes in it. You'll notice that when I show it to you, I'll show it to you again here as soon as I'm done with this little bit. Oh, <laughs> just got paint on my arm. Uh, so, funky little holes. Yeah, that's because on the sander, it releases the dust. Huh. I mean, these people who think these things up are just brilliant. Oh, now, ooh, look at that, it's a little bronzer. I just gave myself a little sheen on my arm. Who needs tanning when you've got paint? Um, so, there we go. Get this paint on here. All right, we're good there. There's a little really thin spot there, that's good. So now where else am I gonna go? Where else do I have it? I've done this one. I've done this little tip. I'm gonna actually put a little bit more on here. Second coat down around here, do, 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 do. The silver is done on here. The copper is done on here. This is the bright brass. No, this is not the bright brass. This is the, um, bronze and then I'm going to go over and move to a different head because the bright brass is not quite done and it's not ready to be painted over for a second coat and I'll do that in a different episode 
But so when I take the tape off, what's going to be left behind is the beautiful jet black of the plastic. All right, so that is where it needs to be for now. And um, I'm going to try to get some of these brush stroke lines off of it. Just I can see that the color or the um, lighting right there is great. So let's talk about lighting since I just talked about that and we're just going to very briefly go over lighting. How important is lighting when you're painting or when you're doing any kind of craft work or anything like that? Well, for me, when I'm painting, light definitely makes a lot of difference in what I do and how I see things. <laughs> Imagine that, right? What a concept. Um, When I say that, I don't mean like I can't paint in lower lights. I can't do this. I have to have this specific angle of light. I have to have this specific color of light. Um, I don't fall into that category. Some people really do, and I get it. I totally get it. Um, I mean, especially if you're working on a you know painting over a period of time and you want the same sort of light and you don't want glare and you know, all these other things. I'm a little bit more, a lot about more freeform than that. So in, in the last house, we had um, this great, I'm taking orange paint, I'm just working on her. I'm just getting organic with what I'm doing. And I'm gonna put orange in her ears. Why am I putting orange in her ears? Because I wanted to put orange on her, like actual bright orange. So I had in the studio, the um, art room, so Lee would do his um, block make or block printing and paper and all of his stuff that he does. And we um, shared a much smaller space. It was a very small bedroom, fourth bedroom. And um, compared to this, which is just freaking amazing to have all the space. But anyway, so we I had these uh, these lights that come down where you've seen them before. There's like a bar and there's light, 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 and they're like spotlights which was great because I could move them on any canvas because I have a, a large, a rather large uh, easel, very heavy duty easel that I could move and angle my paintings so that I could actually really see, uh, get a sort of spotlighting on the easel itself and on my painting as I was working on it. So I really had a lot of options there. Down here, I installed actually a fluorescent overhead uh, shop light, but it's an LED. It's not fluorescent, sorry. But it's like, it looks like a fluorescent you know, with the long bulbs. LED shop light, uh, it's 40 watt overhead. Uh, and then uh, I put that on the main one because we haven't, I haven't roughed in the, um, the wiring for the, for the switches and everything. For the overhead lights, we're gonna have can lights, but it, see, lighting is very important. And uh, so you got to really plan that out. So we're planning it out and we're figuring it out. But um, I also have a lot of natural light, as you know, from the windows. So if I'm working at night, my lighting is very different. Working at night, some prefer to, some people prefer just to work at night because they don't get the glare of the light coming in through windows, or they'd like to have a studio that doesn't have natural light because of what they're working on. Um, I am kind of one of those people with, where as long as it's light enough for me to see, especially the older I get with my eyeballs, uh, I turned 50 and when I turned 50, my vision, my close-up vision really took a hit. So I guess that's typical. Dad said that's what it happened with his too. Um, so here we go. But I do want it so that I can see what I'm working on without having to work too hard visually so that I can enjoy the process of what I'm working on and not feel like I'm fighting my vision. Um, Close-up work has become more difficult um, visually, but, and I could throw a pair of glasses on and then I'd be managing my glasses the entire time, blah, 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 all of that. But so think about your light sourcing while you're painting, because then, what happens is, and I experience this a lot with my paint, my big paintings, I'll be doing them in the studio, I've got this great lighting, it's from a certain angle, and 
Does that look weird? That looks really weird. That looks like really boobalicious. Let's get rid of the boobalicious part of it. Sorry if you're offended by that term, but it is what it is. I don't really want to um, make it look like I'm, for some reason, like, hey, she has boobs type of thing. Um, I mean, nothing, nothing against boobs. I just don't want her to, like, it, I don't know, it just looks weird to me if, if I'm suddenly accentuating her, her, um, her boobs. So anyway, <laughs> sorry, that went in a really weird place. Um, now it's just welcome to my brain and what's going on inside my brain. Um, I do want to accentuate the area. I just don't want to sexualize her. Uh, and that's a conscious thought I'm making. Other people might want to, and I'm really okay with that because I am not one to tell you what to do with your art or how to do it. And I love stuff that is um, sensual and all of those things, but that's not where I'm going with her. So, anyway, so the, your lighting can really affect it. So what I would do is I'd have it in the studio, right? I've got this big four foot by four foot canvas or whatever other dimensions I'm working in. And then I would sort of the next step, so I'd get it to where I really want it to be, or at least where I really want it, think I want it to be. And especially if I'm not working, uh, like I did Ignite Fitness's uh, big installation on their uh, stairwell and it's three large canvases that are mounted one above the other. And um, just an awesome experience, it was so much fun uh, to do. And I did it in the space. I didn't do it in the hallway or in, in the stairwell, but I did it in at the building as they were finishing the, uh, not construction, but finishing the painting of the, the new um, workout facility and all of that they uh, asked me to come in and I was just like, can I do it there? I'd rather do it there. Um, not only is it just really inspiring, but it's, you know, cool to be uh, physically in the space that they were gonna go in or at least next to it. So my lighting was, was very, very good over there when I did that. So this one that, that I did as a commission piece um, at the old house, was really interesting experience because I took it out of my studio, took it out of the space that I was working in. I like that. So then I'm gonna bring this color somewhere else. I don't want just ears and that's just kind of weird because it's like suddenly, oh, and there is orange. So I'm gonna do it right around the eyes. Let's bring, oh, shoot, God. I do rest my, my hands on stuff frequently. So anyway, I moved it out and I put it outside on my deck on the um, easel, brought everything outside. And boy, were there things that I changed. Now, normally I told you I work wet on wet. So there's not like I like this was the wet painting, but it was before I clear coated it, uh, just, just to make sure that there weren't some parts that, because of the glare that I had, because of the angle of the lighting, that I was just not happy with. Well, I did, I found a, a, I found a few, few places. Here we go. This is what I want. This will balance her out. I'm going to go with a smaller brush or a different tip. Here we go. This one's got a rounded tip. I'm go with the same motif straight up and I'm going to go around it on her forehead. Yeah, so I got it outside and that's what I want right there. Let's draw a line. <clears throat> this is going to balance out the top and the bottom. <coughs> Excuse me. My throat is super dry. A lot of allergy crap going on. Yeah, so I got it outside and I was like, and there's two sections of the painting that I needed to, to really rethink that suddenly didn't work in a different light source and a different setting. Um, so what I did... Angle is all wonky on this. Hmm, I want it more rounded. I think that's what I'm needing to do. Go along her scalpel. That's better. Um, 
So then I needed to figure out the next step, which as I said, I work wet on wet. Well, that is not gonna happen because the darn thing is already dry, right? So what the hell was I gonna do? Because I don't normally, working acrylic wet on dry is a whole different world and experience from working acrylic wet on wet. I mean like whole different experience. You can like blending in to the background and if I just wanted, I just needed to do a couple sections. It, it's extremely different approach and different mindset um, than just working wet on wet the entire time. And your palette is your your canvas is your palette. So I was very nervous. I mean, it's a commission, right? You want it to be the best. You, you, you don't know how the client is going to react in the first place or the, you know, you're because they, they put a lot of trust into you. Um, they're spending significant money in that trust, paying you to do this. And if you've never done or you never do a commission piece, it's a lot less nerve. You're, you're not missing out on anything other than nerves. I do like doing them. I enjoy I enjoy the channel challenge. Feel like I, I feel like I'm up to it. I wouldn't say yes if I didn't feel like I was up to it, but that's probably just the performer in me. I've had, you know, having performed professionally for so long that there is that expectation that you're going to bring the goods if you say that you got them. Um, and I wouldn't put myself out there for commissions if I didn't feel as though I could satisfy or know the questions that I needed answered in order for me to best or at least well satisfy my client. Because you also got to mitigate their expectations. So, like I've mentioned in the past, somebody commissions you for a piece of work of any kind, crafts thing, art thing, whatever, uh, you know, like fine art, you need to make sure that they understand it's not going to be necessarily what they think it's going to be. Um, oh my God, what the heck did I just do? I just shifted over to doing something completely different. Yeah, so remember that on the silver guy with the flaps, he is going to be getting um, shells put on him. So I have to put at least a base coat. I have extra paint sitting on my palette right here. I'm going to use that extra paint. This is the Diane Zweig thing. Brilliant artist who is a great instructor and an incredibly supportive person for all artists. She's an incredible woman. She, and this was a concept that was relatively new. Lee um, has done some stuff with her. And she was like, use your extra paint, your leftover paints or your inks or whatever you're using, whatever you're working with. Use your paper cuttings um, that are left over and keep them and you don't be wasteful while you're working on stuff. So I have this paint, leftover paint because I'm gonna have to do another coating on there. So anyway, so I took it outside, took that painting outside and um, shells coming up. I had to figure out how to rework it. So you know what I did? I took a separate canvas, just a small one. I did a base coat where I just did a really super random, you know, nothing specific with, you know, no, no intent behind it, let it dry and then came out, you know, came back at it with um, the intent of going, okay, so now if I need to work on this dry surface that is not canvas and I've got this whole set of paint that was mixed on the canvas that I'm never going to be rec be able to reclaim. That's the thing about the way I work is that that exact match of colorization of colorizing and and mixing and all of that stuff is never going to happen again. I, I, I cannot. I mean, it could maybe by the computer or something else. I mean, that's a little heady, but whatever. I personally am not going to come and be able to reproduce that. Um, so now why am I going to green on this shell? Because some of this is going to show through and I think it's kind of cool to have like multiple colors actually showing through while I do a base coat to seal up the shell, which is really all I'm doing right now. So I practiced on that other canvas 
and had a lot of failure on it. Oh, so frustrating at first. But I really needed to keep myself in the mindset that I was doing a learning experience, right? I'm teaching myself, trying to figure this out, giving myself the space to learn, giving myself the room in my head. When I say space, I mean like space, the final frontier type of space the psychological space, the emotional space, because I was very frustrated at first and I was like freaking out because like nobody else would have noticed what I was needing, what I felt like I needed to do to it. But for me, I would never want to see that painting again if I left it feeling not unfinished as much as un it was unbalanced and just needing a zhuzh in those space, those places. You know, I just wasn't done with it yet. And sometimes you know when you're done with something and you're like, whoop, walk away, now's the time. And then other ones you're like, eh, it needs something. Something's not speaking to me. And if it's not speaking to me, I don't know if it's gonna to speak to the client. I don't, <laughs> quite honestly, I don't care. I do care. I do want the, the client to have it speak to them. It's gonna to speak to them differently and I can't control that, but it has to be any piece that I work on, if I say that it's finished, it needs to actually be finished in my in my my heart and in my uh, and, and my artistic mind, whatever part of the brain that is. It needs to actually. I need to be able to let it go. That's what it was, and I couldn't let this one go. So I taught myself a weirdo technique, and I can't even tell you what it is now. It was. Literally, like, I dug through the, the some of the paint in this one section. I dug through the paint, actually, that I had on the, the surface with a, a rougher brush as I was applying the next layer. And that was most satisfying to me because it suddenly gave it... What was happening was that it looked like I had, boom, I put on another layer of paint. And it has nothing to do with the paint around it. And I, it's like, well, it suddenly became really intentional painting of I have to match these colors kind of idea. Whereas that's not really what I do. I don't match colors. I work with color and get the flow and get the feeling. And as I mentioned, I, I go with the feeling of what I'm working on. And I, I listen to my sort of inner speech of um, what you guys are listening to right now of where things go, how I get there and what it inspires me to. So I'm going to do this so that there we go. All right. I've got this now transitioned and coated bottom and top. Very good. That will then be able to make sure I seal everything here. And the easiest way to do this was I, I could have just literally watered down some paint and then dipped this in there and it would have gotten on all the surfaces but it is where i need it for right now cool so that's going to go on his head and it may stay green i don't know i'm gonna go with whatever it ends up being all right so i am in a good place now with that i'm going to put a little bit more of this orange on up here just to solidify the color there we go and I think that's going to do it for her. She's done. Ta-da! So what I will do is I'm going to plant her. And I will bring down the other two that have Basil. So Mr. Basil, who is upstairs and outside. I'm going to wash my brushes, make sure I take these up with me. And um, I will show you the three finished planters. And I will show you uh, and I'll talk to you in one of the next episodes about the challenges that I had while planting them and the discoveries that I had, why this one, uh, the silver one, is being much more uh, deeply excavated brain-wise. And um, for planting and things like that and the challenges I've had watering them since because of the way that they were cut out. All considerations that... If I make the mistakes, then you don't have to. All right. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. And I hope you treat yourself very well. And make stuff. Get creative. I like how that light 
just looking on that, all right? We'll see how that comes out, comes away with the paint and the, um, the tape being take up, taken off. I'll weigh in on whether or not I actually put another coat, all right? Have a good one. Like and subscribe and share. <laughs> it's so dorky. All right, have a great day.